Hi everybody! <laughs> I am going to go over the last example that we did in class on Friday right before spring break and so that we're all on the same page with reaction mechanisms and so this is one of the reactions that we talked about that day the reaction of hydrogen and iodine to make 2HI. This is all in the gas phase and so what one might think when first looking at this reaction is that a possible mechanism could be that it's just a one step mechanism where these two just collide and that's the elementary step. So if it were, if one step, then that means that this one step would be the slow step and that would mean that the rate law would be consistent with the slow step as it always is. So it would be that the rate would be equal to, and we can look exactly at these two together as if this were an elementary step, these two would be colliding. And so with this, we would say, all right, every step, every elementary step, we can give a little um, rate constant. And if this were one step, we could call that K1. And that the rate would be equal to this K1 times these two things that are colliding, in which case, it's H2 and I2. But this is the thing, is that we don't know if this is the correct rate law until we have done the experiments and we have determined that this is indeed the rate law. Rate laws are only experimentally determined. And it turns out, no, not the rate law. Okay, so that means that this is not correct and this must not be a one-step mechanism. Okay, so what then has happened is that um, the rate law was then determined and the people who found it out, and I'm gonna actually not say what it is first so that it gives us a chance to figure out what it is based on the reaction mechanism that they proposed. So a rate law was determined and a consistent, as they have to be, a consistent reaction mechanism was proposed. And it turned out to be a two-step mechanism. Okay, so let's look at what they proposed. All right, so new proposal. All right, so it was proposed that there was a first step that where there were these I2 ad, uh, molecules, I2 molecules that would break apart in the gas phase once again. Um, they would break apart into two separate iodine atoms. Um, and this was step one. And they called this a fast equilibrium. So that means that it was reversible um, this is very common to see fast equilibria in reaction mechanisms, and this is the first example of us talking about it in class. So the proposal has this as a first step, step one, and then second step of this um, reaction mechanism is that these two I atoms collide with an H2 molecule, And when they do that, it creates the two hydrogen iodide molecules. And that this particular step is the slow step. Okay. So this is the proposal. And so what we want to do is we want to do a few things. Um, and one is figure out what is the net reaction for this. So how do we figure out net reaction? we should always be able to add up the steps of a reaction mechanism and get the overall reaction. So in this case, we have, oh, and now I can change the color here. Um, so we've got these I atoms that appear in this step, and in this step, step they are consumed. So we've got something going on here, 
goes away there. It does not appear in the overall, the net equation. And these are coincidentally, starts with I, um, intermediate. Okay, so an intermediate is something that can appear in the pathway through the mechanism, but then it disappears later. And it's just part of the path as the molecules turn from the reactants into the products. Okay, so we've only identified this one intermediate. Um, there happens to be two of them, two atoms of them. Each of these are an intermediate. And um, so now we can say, all right, we're going to add everything up. The intermediates are going to cancel out. And so that leaves these two reactants. I'm writing them in different order, but it doesn't matter. I2 and H2 gives the products here, 2HI. Okay, so that's one of the criteria of a good mechanism. We have to have the steps add up to give the overall reaction. Um, we also um, have to think about the molecularity. And so this first step here, there's only one molecule breaking apart, so that's a unimolecular step, a unimolecular elementary step, and that is allowed, that is um, very common. Now here we have two atoms, these two separate I atoms hitting a H2 molecule. Um, this is rare. It is termolecular or trimolecular. Um, it can happen though. All right, so we look at overall, everything's looking good, but now we want to figure out what is the mechanism? I'm sorry, what is the rate law? This is the mechanism. Is the rate law that is consistent with this mechanism? Okay, so we always start out and we look at the slow step. Okay, so that's our first key is we know that the rate law for a reaction has to be consistent with the slow step. So we're going to start there. So we say, all right, slow step, which happens to be step two. Um, the mini rate law. Okay, so I call this a mini rate law because it's the rate law that you can write directly from an elementary step. You can only do that with elementary steps because elementary steps are showing exactly how molecules are colliding. You can't write a rate law for an overall reaction because an overall reaction is just the net overall thing that happens. It's not showing exactly how the molecules are colliding. The rate laws are dependent on how those molecules are coming together. So for the slow step, the mini rate law we can write directly and part of that has to do with identifying that we have these rate constants for each step. So in the forward direction for step one, we'll call that K1. That's the mini rate constant for step one. The reverse direction we can call K minus one. And then for step two, we can call that rate constant K2. And then when we write our mini rate law for the slow step, that will be the rate of step two. So that's why I put the subscript there, two. And then we look at this, um, make that look like an equal sign. Okay, and so now we're gonna look back at step two, the slow step, and we are going to use the rate constant. So this is the form of a rate law. We always have rate equals, rate constant. In this case, it's K2 for step two. And then we write it from what is colliding. And we see, okay, what is colliding? We have I atoms colliding. There happens to be two of them. Okay, I atoms. So this means that the slow step is dependent upon concentration of I atoms. And because there are two of them, we square them. This is consistent with how we write equilibrium constants. That's something we talked about in Chem 115. And we will talk about soon in Chem 116, but just as a reminder, the stoichiometric coefficients on steps, those that appear in a step, in an elementary step, we then can write as a superscript in the mini rate law. Okay, and then we have the um, other thing it's reacting with, that H2. So we'll put that in. Okay. 
So here's our mini rate law, but here is also the problem. One of the rules of rate laws is they cannot contain intermediates. And so this intermediate there, intermediate not allowed. It's not allowed in a rate law. So we're not done yet, is the take home of what we're saying here. Okay, and right law. All right, so we need to do something about this. We need to substitute. And our key to be able to substitute is the fact that there is this, I'm gonna scroll back here, that there is this fast equilibrium happening. That's going to allow us to create um, a way to substitute out. Okay, so we're going to look back at that fast equilibrium. And we're going to think about what that means, this fast equilibrium. What it means is that we have a rate in a forward direction. So that's rate one. And that that rate is equal to the reverse direction. So rate one equals rate two. This is always true for fast equilibria. And so what that also means is that we can write each one of these rate laws, these mini rate laws, um, based on the direction that we're talking about. So rate one, <clears throat> kind of try to not scroll too much here, but rate one, we've got um, in the forward direction, K1 and I2. So forward direction, I2 is breaking apart. And that is with that rate constant that's associated with it. Is K1 times the concentration of I2. And then in the reverse direction, we have these I atoms. And we have two of them. And those could go backwards. And those could reform the I2 molecule. And so that mini rate law in the reverse direction is equal to K minus one times those I atoms. And again, there's two of them, so we square it. All right, so this is our key right here. Um, I may as well circle that. We recognize this is that, this is the thing we're trying to get rid of in the rate law. This is the intermediate that shouldn't appear there. And it also happens to be squared. So what we get to do is we can solve for this I that's squared. Um, we can divide both sides by K minus one. And that gives us this I squared. And then this, we can substitute in, yay. Okay, so this is equal to all of this. So we're gonna plug all of this that is in the form of one of the reactants, something that is allowed in a rate law. And we will put this in this rate law here that we know has to be consistent. This is the slow step. So I'm gonna rewrite that. Okay, rate two equals, this was our K2 times concentration of I's that were squared times the concentration of H2. And this is where we get to say, all right, cool. We get to substitute all of that into there. And this is what it's gonna end up looking like. Okay, I'm gonna put all these K's together in the front. K1 divided by K minus one. And there's a K2 there as well. Let's put those all together. This I2 is gonna go in here. Now, this is now I, iodine molecule, so I2, not I squared. These are the iodine atoms. This H2 is still there. Okay, so check it out. Um, these can all be combined into one rate constant. They're all constants. And so another form of writing this Rate law would just be as I'm writing here. Okay, 
Here is our rate law. This is consistent with a slow step. We did have to do some substitution. Everything looks good in terms of um, we have reactants that appear here. We don't see any intermediates, so that looks good. And here's our rate law. I hope this is helpful.